So why don't we kick things off here? So Jeff, you know, I've been following you for a long time in terms of your blog. So maybe you can just start by um, just sharing your background with with the audience. So how did you get started with trading? You know, how long how long have you been trading now? Well, I got started in I want to say late '98, like November of '98. I, I, I think that's when I. It's either that or '99. It's been so long now, but I'm pretty sure it was late '98. And I just kind of started watching the markets. I've always been entrepreneurial, and I was trying to figure out, you know, how how, how can I, you know, take some of the savings that I had and do something with it. And so I just kind of started following the markets and uh, on Bloomberg and uh, Investors Business Daily. I read a lot of and got a subscription to their thing, their their magazine or their newspaper and really watched the markets and, you know, given the time frame, anybody could have pretty much picked a, a stock. I remember my first trade was I Omega and uh you the know You guys made the hard drives of the uh yeah. devices, right? Yeah. I was in and out in ninety minutes and made three hundred and fifty dollars and I was like, Oh my god, <laughs> this is this is for me <laughs> But as I said, you know, the market made everyone look like geniuses, and really over the next couple of years, it was, it was, uh, you know, making money and then giving the majority of that back in the in the boom, and then the the, the bust. Yeah. And then really, I had to decide and you know do some studying and some uh, de- determining what sort of style I wanted to to kind of follow. And it was really between do I want to be you know like fundamentals or technicals and I I remember I had gotten some subscription services back there and I kind of you know one was fundamental and one was technical and I found that every time I was placing these trades based on fundamentals it was like they would just blow up in my face like waste management was was one I waste management and Rite Aid were were two stocks that they for different reasons they had massive uh, stock collapses, and I remember like doing the research and determining that these were undervalued, and then I bought them, and then they went down more. And then the, my momentum trading, it was like I was buying stocks that were the, these technology stocks that were breaking out, and they were they were doing well. And so, just through that trial and error, I kind of determined what I was comfortable with. And you know, since then, I've developed different uh, my, my 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 strategy. For buying stocks, and, and I've developed like this market timing signal that tells me when to be long, when to be short, uh, and I, and also in regards to shorting, I I have found for me personally that I generally don't short individual stocks. I generally I generally short indexes because you just don't want to be in a stock short and the news is released, and so you know my preference yeah. is momentum trading. But uh, but also timing the markets. But then, you know, when the markets are not conducive for trading, uh, and they're bearish, then then I short the indexes and just and then like we're in right now, we're in a trendless market. I'm just yeah. not really doing much of anything. And so, who taught you to? Did you find a mentor to start trading, or how did you pick up trading? Like, did you just pick up a bunch of books, or how did you begin to put your system together? Self-taught through just observation of the markets, finding indicators that that resonate with me. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an RSI guy, ADX, hmm. uh, and uh, so you know, you, there's so many indicators out there that you really need to just study and watch and, and pick the ones that uh, resonate with you. And so over time, it's just everything has kind of evolved and oh, I've been self just self-taught through books and wow yeah and so what was what, what was the turning point for you did you can you just have a do you have like some sort of, of memory of when you said all right I can actually do this um, as a career and not just come maybe a hobby do you have well, that turning point moment or was it more long-winded than that well okay so I was a part-time trader for many years in fact just now thinking about this, when I first started trading, I didn't even have a computer. I had to I had to go to the the public library back in Pennsylvania, do my research in the evenings. I would check my stock quotes on a 20 minute delayed newspaper uh, telephone number. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes. 
when you think about technology now. But uh, so I was a part-time trader for the longest time when I lived in Pennsylvania, and then when I moved here uh, to to be with my wife, uh, it, that was a bit of a learning curve as well, going from part-time to full-time. So yeah. when I was when I was part time, I was I was doing well, but I was doing it, you know, as just part time right. in terms of the amount of time that I was putting into it. But my return was pretty good. But then when I w- when I moved and I was full time, I tended to over manage, mm. and and it was more it, 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 there was some stress for like the first year, relying on that on on those, that profit for for income. And so I guess the turning point probably would have been in 2005 um, after I gave myself some time to adjust yeah. to being a full-time trader. And about around that time, I had really honed in on the type of setups that I look for. Uh, the and my my timing signal had really come together there in terms of uh, when because it's not good enough to just be a good stock picker you need to also be on the right side of the market as well. Mm. So I would say in 2005 is when everything kind of came together and that was you know that's after five years of uh, you know part time and then the one year the one year full time kind of observing the markets it does take time to really you know you need to see different markets and after yeah. that I had seen the late 90 tech bubble I saw what really bullish markets look like and then when the market uh, really tanked, and, and then yeah. yeah, and then in 2007, I saw what 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 things, how things can bad, how bad they can get. Yeah. Uh, so I've really seen all 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 kinds of markets in terms of you know ex- extremely euphoric and extremely uh, bearish. Interesting. So what was that? So when it coalesced together and you said, all right, I can I can do this uh, as my profession, as my career. Um, was it more of a mindset thing that changed for you, or is it picking up an extra set of skills? What do you think that last little bit was that that took you over the finish line, or took you to the place where you felt comfortable? Oh, that's a good question. I think it was just the confidence in in your in my system, in terms mm. of what I what I look for for a strong edge in a trade. And what I look for in terms of what the markets are actually telling us. So right now, the, right now the markets aren't telling us much of anything. What we, what we have is, is a market that, for most of this year, has just kind of flatlined. Especially when you look at the Dow, the Nasdaq has creeped up a bit. But but right now, I think the markets are trying to. There's two scenarios I think that. Are happening right now. Either the market. And just for the readers out there, sorry, Jeff. Just for the readers and listeners, yeah, yeah, today yeah. is June the 30th, and uh, you know I think right now we have a, a, some, a bunch of news in the headlines around Greece. Um, just to give uh, folks the backdrop. So sorry, we didn't want to. No, that, jump that's in actually there. Go quite good. So I think the markets are either in a long-term topping process, and 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 so the markets are going to have a. You know, we saw yesterday we saw a big 350-point drop on the Dow, mm. and or. Or the markets are congest or consolidating the gains from the last couple of years, and we're going to go up. But the markets aren't telling us anything right now in terms of which way that's going to go. So you can't really position yourself either way, um, because it, it, if it goes the opposite way, you're going to get up, your, your portfolio is going to be extremely damaged. Yeah. And, and trying and trying to have a few longs and a few shorts can be tough too, because. You could get chopped up there. You lose. You can yeah. lose your confidence, and so we, we. As frustrating as it can be for a trader, you know, just like Jesse Livermore says that sometimes you just got to get away from the markets because mm. there's just no point in trading them. So you talked about an edge earlier, your edge. So is that part of it? Is is knowing when to, you know, when to get involved? What is an what does your edge look like? So when people talk about edge, how do you define that? Um, for me, it's a chart pattern combined mm-hmm. with what the, the general market is telling you. That's and, – and, and so, so simply put, 
It's looking for stocks. So when the markets are long, or I'm sorry, bullish, it's looking for stocks that are breaking out on some sort of news, some sort of earnings, product release, uh, something, a catalyst, uh, like a game-changing catalyst. Uh, but the stock has to be breaking out of a, of a base of some sort. And so that catalyst, is, it's, like, it's like a game changer for that stock, and it's going to continue to go up. So those are the kinds of chart patterns that I look for. Like, uh, you know, I use the EDX and the RSI to, to gauge how strong it is, and then I look at the news. And then, uh, obviously, you look at what the markets are doing. Yeah. But, but right now, even when the NASDAQ, or like a couple, couple months ago, when the markets looked a little more bullish, they, looked, they had more, like the NASDAQ was hitting highs, even at that point, my scans weren't confirming the move. It wasn't really producing new leadership in the markets. Mm. And that's one of the reasons that I've been so cautious uh, about, I guess I should say, I, I haven't been as bullish as some people have been because we don't have that new leadership, those, those, yeah. uh, that new technology that drives the markets higher. And until... All I have to do is look at my scans that I run every day, and I can see the stocks. And, and uh, we're just not getting that new leadership, that new blood that's going to drive these markets higher, in my opinion. So, what's your approach then? Let's yeah, let's get a little deeper. So, what's your approach then to trading uh, stocks? It sounds like you have a universe of stocks that you that you scan on a regular basis. Maybe you can just share like what the time frames you trade on, as well as as the the universe of instruments or stocks that you look at. Well, I run. I've got a couple different, like I use stock charts. Uh, I use one of the tools within TD Ameritrade. Uh, it's called Strategy Desk, uh, and I use FinViz. And I, I just have some scans, you know, parameters for scans that I that I run. And generally, it yields uh, a couple hundred results. But then I have a another scan to to weed that down, and I'll, I'll get anywhere from 20 to 50 each night. Uh, and I just kind of go through them and, and see uh, what stocks are appealing to me in terms of te te technically. Yeah. Uh, so, wait, were, were there two questions there? Um, yeah, so I was just thinking, so it sounds like you have a basket of stocks that you look at. Is it mostly well, I look are, at all, across I, all NASDAQ? Or yeah, it's, it's actually NASDAQ and Dow. I don't just, okay. I'm not limited to either. Yeah. Do you trade penny stocks at all, or do you keep your stock with pretty much in... Okay, small, that's a good, mid, and large cap. I general so I do have a volume minimum volume requirement of a half a million shares. Okay. And I generally don't. Well, I I, I ne hardly ever trade anything under a dollar, and I really don't like to trade anything under four. Hmm. And I'm not a big fan of over the counter stocks either. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, uh, they're not as stable. I guess is the best way. Like they're. They're they're more they can be more prone to releasing some news and the stock could be down twenty twenty five percent. Right. You know why why expose your portfolio to that kind of risk? You know we're yeah. we're not really traders we're risk managers and I think right. that that's an important concept. I love that. And then so you're approaching is it uh, is it more like swing trading or are you holding long term longer term positions? How would you characterize your trading? Well, I'm definitely not a sh I'm definitely not a day trader, uh, okay. and I've been. It seems like the older that I get, the, the the longer my time frame gets to be. And when I say longer, it's actually not quite that long. But before it would be like a week. Yeah. Now it's anywhere like I would say ideally, it's anywhere from three to six months because. When I was speaking about like this catalyst, this this game-changing event, oftentimes this is the start of of a good, especially if it's an earnings-driven news event. You're generally going to get a, a couple quarters of this stock going up. So you know, one quarter is three months, and so you know, anywhere from two to three quarters, I guess you 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 want to try to take advantage of that because you know, big mutual funds are piling into these. Stocks as well, and, and they're not day traders. They're not month traders. Right. They're, but but I'm also, but I'm not a long term investor by any stretch. Uh, I don't really, I, I don't think that's the way to go either. I think you need to be nimble. You need to not be too greedy, or not not greedy is not the word. 
you don't want to, you want to have a little patience with with these trades and let them let them work themselves out. Mm. And then, how many positions would you have on it at any given time if the market conditions were right? Uh, you, you limit yourself uh, that way. I, I, ideally, for me, anywhere between eight and twelve. Okay. Because again, that spreads your risk out, but you're right. not. But you don't have a ton of positions either that you're not able to, to to keep an eye on them. Right. And so trading that style, then it's 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 uh, interesting because you know when you take those longer term positions, not like like they're not long term, but uh, I guess they're more like swing tra- trades. I know like day traders, they like that approach because they get to make money every day, or they have the potential of making money every day. <laughs> <I would say. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Most day traders are profitable, so you have the potential. Um, as you get further out, then you know you, obviously you, your your opportunity for 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 you know bringing the cash register is you know more I guess less frequent, right? So um, well, okay. kind of more feast and famine, right? I just I just thought of the the part of your previous question that I didn't get a chance to answer. You were talking about time frames, right? Um, so sometimes and a lot of times when the markets are bullish. Uh, I'll have a so I, I trade off of four time frames. Uh, the the fit, and some of these are, are specific for entries: the 15, the 60, the four hour, and the daily. Mm. And then my longer term, I'll actually use the weekly. But so a lot of the times when the markets are bullish and you're and you're and you're getting into these stocks, uh, they'll have a tendency to, to to really like shoot up quick. And so sometimes I do. Take profits and then buy back into that that stock. Gotcha. So that's one of the ways that I will, for your for your phrase, ring the cash register. Yeah. In, in terms, you know, I so I have these positions, and then you know I use the Bollinger Bands on different time frames to kind of look watch, watch for overextended, like where, yeah. where I think a stock is it's kind of gone too far too fast. And so I will take profits and then look to buy back. So if I'm if I'm taking profits on a stock on say a four hour, I'll then watch the daily to buy back in on it. Uh, okay. So I kind of have this system of you know having my watch list, having my portfolio. So the watch list I'm looking for entries. My portfolio yeah. I'm looking for exits, and I use I use uh, Thinkorswim to, for alerts, and so. Even though I'm saying I'm, you want to hold a position for a couple quarters, I'm not necessarily holding it for those. I'll be trading in and out. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So I'm not trading in and out of like a ton of stocks. I'm just trading yeah. in and out of the stocks that I'm watching. Gotcha. And uh, you know, I've been following your blog for a long time, and you know, your charts that you share are super clean. So um, maybe can you just share with us like maybe one setup? Like, what's one of your favorite setups? What does that look like? Mm. I wish I had a chart right now of uh of a good setup, but they're just not out there. Um you But know, you, are there things in the chart that you look for? Oh, okay, I like I like a really strong RSI. Like Okay. Like I like I like the stock to break out on on massive volume relative to what its average trading is. Uh on a catalyst. I want that RSI high, I want that eighty like and I'm talking like over 70s. Uh, the, the stronger, the better. Yeah. ADX, a strong. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're familiar. Do you use the ADX? I I play with it. Yeah. Yeah, you want that green indicator, like straight up. You you want that black line going up. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I just don't have a, a strong. I mean, a good setup. Like it's been so long since I've seen a a really good setup. Yeah. Let me let me keep looking as I as I answer as I uh, as we, as our interview goes on, and I'll see if I can sure. find. Sure. Yeah. So you're looking for an RSI that actually sounds like it's overbought already. You're looking for ADX that's kind of pointing up, so showing that it's in a good kind of trend type of move. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're looking to buy like on a pullback of some sort, or how do you get into the into the position? Uh, yeah, yeah. I I I just I'll use the different time frames. And uh, I'll buy as it, you know, I generally want to see a two to three day pullback on, on lower uh-huh. volume. And, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll like on Thinkorswim, I have those time frames 
already plugged in, and I'll just kind of watch to see how it's behaving. You know, a simple pullback down to maybe the 50-day moving average on gotcha. on a depending on which time frame I'm watching, either the 60 or the four hour. Those can be really good uh, entry points as well. Interesting. Okay. Uh, another really good strategy that I've talked about on on my blog a ton of times, and this. This is regarding the RSI. So the RSI tends to oscillate between, and this is more of a longer-term pullback buy, but it works a lot of the time. So a bullish trend, the RSI will oscillate between 80 and 40. So if you have a stock that breaks out on some sort of earnings earnings move, and it, and it goes and it's really strong, and you know during that breakout it goes up to say 75. Watch that stock over the next couple months. As it pulls back, uh, it'll find a bottom down near 40, hmm. and then that will be generally be a really good, uh, decent swing trading opportunity. And then on the flip side, bearish trends oscillate between 60 and 20. So when a stock breaks down and it sells off really hard, the RSI will, will, will go down to like 20, and then over the next couple of months, as that stock has a bit of a dead cap bounce, it'll generally peak around 60. Interesting. Okay. So and then maybe something. use, like you said, the four hour or the one hour and look for that kind of 50 period. Yeah. Pull back to the 50 period for maybe a good entry. Okay. I like that. So that's a, yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. And so I have to ask, so we're talking about your blog, zentrader.ca. Mm-hmm. Where, did you, where did you come up with that name? <laughs> Uh, my wife uh, helped me with the tagline, and I was trying okay. to think of a, I was tr- I was trying to think of a way because you know when you think of finance, you think of stress. Yeah. You know, when, you th- <laughs> when you think of Wall Street, you, you picture these guys in suits, yeah. you know, drinking and smoking and being stressed out, and I, you know, I was trying to think of a, a, the what's the complete opposite of that. Yeah. Right, and you know, and having this, having this detached. No, this, 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 being detached from the markets and trying to to look at it without biases, and part of that comes from having having you know creating a system that you can rely on, and so you're not rely you're not like like I don't watch the markets like every minute like I I, I only have one well, I have one desktop and one laptop, but you know I don't only have basically only use one screen when trading, and lots of times when I'm traveling I'll just have my laptop. You're not so one of those like, guys who has like 12 screens in his room. <laughs> no, no, I, I, that's not me. And so I was really for Zen Trader, I was kind of looking for what's the what's the complete opposite of of what people think of when they think of like Wall Street and, and, and traders. Yeah. So. And how long has your blog been up now? Because I've been following you for a long time, and yeah, that that Zen Trader name always stuck out to me. Like it really, really, uh, <laughs> really stuck out to me. So how, how long has your blog been around? I want to say since 2006, but it's either okay. 2006 or 2008, maybe yeah. 2008. I, I can't. It's, it's been a long time, and and I apologize for 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 anybody who is a, is a follower of me that's listening to this. I know I've taken a bit of an extended break on my blog, <laughs> but I do plan on getting back. But see, I've been doing it for so long, yeah. and I figured I would use this time that I'm kind of you know watching the markets, but not like hardcore involved uh, to kind of take a break for that so when I do come back I'll be more refreshed get back to it Jeff we're, we're missing you <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I, well tell, tell the market staff to, to make it interesting again <laughs> Jeff will come back to blogging <laughs> uh, yeah I mean seriously so you brought up an interesting point before just about you know the perceptions of trading around it being a stressful type of um, you know Occupation. So, how? What's your perspective on on managing emotions or stress while trading? How do you do? How do you do it? How do I do it? Uh, well, I try. I try to not over leverage myself. Hmm. Uh, you know, if if I'm feeling if I'm feeling like I I am getting over leveraged or 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 I'm feeling a little. Well, you know, sell, sell down to the sleeping point. It, that's a valid rule. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that's good advice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've I, I've I've had 
stressful periods. You know, I remember I remember one time when I don't even remember when this was, but it was probably four years ago. I don't know. Something happened in in the Asian markets and the and the and I was really le- the markets were really bullish and I was really leveraged. And this is one of the lessons that I had learned. Uh, the, the markets gapped down, and it was just one of those days where I lost more money in that day than I had than I had ever lost in one single day. And I was just like, oh, okay, man. I was really leveraged, and I'm like, this is never going to happen again. And so, you know, when, when I start to, I don't use margin a lot, but I do use it when it's when when I need, when it's applicable. But a lot of the times when when as a trader, this is a really good rule. If you if you do use margin. And you and you're and you're really really heavy on margin. A lot of the times, you really need to step back and be like, okay, do I need to sell some of these positions or at the very least trim some of these positions? Because right. a lot of the times, you know, we all get caught up in whatever is happening at that point in time, and it's really easy to to just buy more or hold on to other positions. It's easy to get greedy, yeah. and you you really need to be banking profits you know if you're as bullish as on the markets as 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 your portfolio is telling you then the markets are probably they're probably going to continue to go higher but it's still a good idea to take some of that money off that way you're not mm. exposing yourself yeah that makes a lot of sense you know margin cuts both ways right it's <laughs> it does when it's in your favor it's great when it's not <laughs> it's not pretty yeah and so, you know, we, we were talking right before the call, and you had mentioned you're going to go for a run today, and I think that's one of the. Uh, it sounds like is that one of your ways that you kind of let off steam or just try to keep your head straight? Well, it is. I mean, trading is, uh, you know, you just sit at your desk, so you've got to do something to yeah. to maintain your health. And you know, I've got a chocolate lab that, you know, he's he's my running he's my running he's my trading partner, and the winner is my foot. <laughs> He's my foot warmer. <laughs> so, no, it's it's just, for me, I just, and, and I've not been a runner all my life. I actually had asthma for the longest time. And then right around the Olympics or a little after the Olympics, uh, my asthma cleared up. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how or why, and I'm very thankful. And so my, my wife, she was, she was she's a runner, and she got me, <laughs> I remember, I remember she's like, Come on, she's like, just come running with me, and I'm like, I, I remember telling her, I am not a runner. I'm like, because she always, she always had this image of us running together, and and I'm like, I don't think that's probably ever gonna happen. And sure enough, you know, I, I started out slow, and and eventually, yeah, I became, I really enjoy it. I, I think it's, I, for you know, for me, I think it does a lot. You know, like sitting in a chair. That 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 running, uh, I think it helps like realign your back. Yeah. Cause, like yeah. a lot of people, their posture is not that good, and so yeah. uh, running or just doing something. And, and in Vancouver, it's so easy. Everyone, it's such an active city, right? Yeah. So yeah. And running, so how often? So have you found benefits then from uh, you know the running benefits? Have they extended to trading? Do you find there's a there's benefits well, there? I think. Uh, I can't really put my finger on any benefit other than then I just feel better and I think feel better. You, can't, well you, can't, yeah. you can't put a price on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, my attitude is if you feel better, you're probably going to trade better. If you feel like exactly. shit. You know? Exactly. You're going <laughs> to sleep. Like shit. <laughs> you're going to sleep better at night. Yeah. You're going to be able to get up and 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 not oversleep. And I mean, how many times? I don't know how many times in the past I've overslept and missed out on a trade. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Well, I know when I used to live in Vancouver, you know, and I try to trade, you know, obviously the market opens there at 6.30. If you're not getting a good night's sleep, then showing up to the trading desk at 6.30 in the morning or usually earlier than that because <laughs> you want to get ready a bit. Waking up around 5-ish or so, it's, it's an early start. Well, as, soon, uh, as, soon, as soon as I said that about oversleeping, yeah. it, it dawned on me uh, that – when you when you live on the east coast, it's not so much a big deal because I mean <laughs> it's less. <laughs> but but here, like I, like you said, the markets that was a bit of an adjustment too because I'm a night owl, believe yeah. it or not. Like I just uh, and so we, but uh, to be done at one in the day yeah. is awesome. Yeah, so that, that's you know I love that because that's part of the you know the trading lifestyle. So tell me more about you know what your typical day looks like. What time do you get up in the morning? When are you usually done? Well. 
for me, I, you know, I'm up at about 6.15. Uh, I, I'm not one of those guys that needs a lot of, um, actually 6.20, I think, is when my alarm goes off. Uh, I don't need a lot of time in the morning. Uh, and so, because I do all my research the night before, set my alerts. Uh, I know, you know, I don't have, like, huge watch lists that I'm watching. Uh, right now, I hardly have anything that I'm watching, but I am watching a few. And, um, you know, I just wake up, make myself some coffee, uh, kind of watch the open, see if, because, you know, the open and, and, and the close, for me, are the two most important days, because mm. at the open, I'm watching for two things. I'm watching for quick pullbacks on stocks I want to buy, mm. and gap ups that look extended on stocks that I that I currently own to sell, to take some profits. Uh, there's just weird, strange moves that happens in the first couple minutes. And so, you know, I, I, I focus my attention on, on that, and then I have my alerts for my other stocks that I'm watching to buy and pull back. And then after, after about the first half an hour, hour, um, it's, you know, I, I, I kind of just do whatever. And, and then I... Uh, I have one eye on the markets, but like I said, I'm not. I just, you know, spend some time with my wife in the morning before she goes to work, and and then, uh, you know, around nine. I typically run around nine because uh, that's about lunchtime uh, in the in the U.S. Uh, from the East Coast. Yeah. And so, and then, you know, at the end of the day, I'll, you know, or I'll, I'll watch for the last hour is when I'll be looking to. You know, are there stocks that I'm I'm in that have had nice runs and and are you know do I want to sell and then I'll be looking for other stocks that I, that I may potentially want to buy. Nice. You know, and then and you know I'll, I'll also when the market this is all my normal day when the markets are, are are much more conducive for trading and then also during that that the day you know I'll be doing blogging stuff or I'll be you know, maybe catching up with some of my trader friends on Skype or, you know, on Twitter or whatever. And so you're usually done by so you're done by one o'clock, right? So that's it. When do you do your research? Like later in the evening or do you do it right right then and there? You know, it doesn't I don't really have a set time. You know, it depends on what my what my wife has planned. If she's got something that she wants to do <laughs> in the evening, I'll generally try to knock out what I need to do right after yeah. the market closes so I have my yeah. evenings free or you know, if I'm gonna go do something or uh in the afternoon, I'll, I'll, I'll do it at night. It's, there's really no set schedule there. Okay, man, I, I do miss those trading hours living in the West Coast because being done at one o'clock in the afternoon is a, it's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> one one thirty, it's a pretty good feeling to have the rest of the day available well, to you, you. It gives you a few more options on how you can, yeah. how you spend your time. Yeah, or, sure. or, or when you do what you need to get done. Yeah. But waking so up think, early is not the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is a drawback. <laughs> so you need to have that strong coffee in the morning, right? Well, yeah, and you need to have uh, a good work ethic too, right? That's uh, as a trader, you know, we 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 do everything on our own time, and so you know, you, you just want to make sure that you know, because working on your own or working by yourself is not for everyone. Not everyone is cut out for. They don't have a discipline. Yeah, so talk more about that. So, you know, that that's the that's you know, thing that people don't think about a lot is when I mean, a lot of people would love to be a full time trader, but they don't think through all those different things. So, what have you found to be the hardest part of you know kind of maintaining this kind of trading career? And what, is it different than what you thought it was going to be like when you started? You know, those many many years ago. Well, honestly, I didn't. I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, <laughs> like I said, it was it was all. I didn't know anything about stock market when I first started trading. So I, I didn't really have any expectations and maybe that's maybe that's the best thing. Yeah. Just to just let each each person's own trading career slash lifestyle evolve on it, it organically on on its own, right? Because hmm. what's best for me is not going to be best for you and what's best for you is not going to be best for Joe Trader. Right. So you know, there's I think there's certain traits character traits that you need to have, like self-discipline being uh, one of them, um, because if you don't budget your time to, to put the hours in to do the trading, your preparation, uh, then you're never, you know, it, it, it's going to make your one success 
a little more difficult. Yeah. Like my wife, she uh, she would not be a good trader, I don't think, because she she's a people person, right? She likes to be around people unless she worked in a desk, like unless she worked somewhere. But I don't think she would make a good in the, like like home trader because, like I said, she she wants to be around people, and if, and if that's the you know, but the other thing is too though is in this day and age, you know, it, it, having access to other traders is. I mean, we've never had a period in time like this with with Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, it's easier easy. than ever. Yeah, it, it really is easier than ever, but it's still not the same as being with people as well. Yeah. I mean, if you're that kind of person, which I'm not, I'm an introvert. So. And so has the has the um, like, has it been as I guess you know you hear a lot about this ten thousand hour you know hmm. rule. Mm-hmm. Do you that give that credence? Does it take you that long, kind of 10,000 hours? Is that kind of well, the expectation you would give to people? It's like, yes, you need to dedicate that much time in terms of self-discipline before you can get, you know, I good? think for trading, I think for trading, and this is this is just trading because, I mean, I think a, mo, a lot of uh, things, that, skills and, and jobs and, and things that you want to learn, I think it does require that much time. But I think in trading, I think you need to see different markets. I think, and yeah. and and that could take ten years, or that could take five years, or it could take fifteen years. Because right. because the way people are is if they've only seen one or two kinds of markets, and and they've been they've been killing it in those markets. Right. The moment they think they know everything, they'll go heavy, and then once a new kind of market shows up, you you, ha- you have the potential to to lose it all. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I think that you you need to like uh, you need to be a risk manager all the time. Like yeah. all the time. So, I I think you need I, there needs to be a considerable amount of time for you to kind of develop your style that is that you're comfortable with and to see the different kinds of markets so you can actually like I'm not a big fan of back testing strategies. Because it it doesn't account for the emotion. No, the emotional. No matter how detached we we can be with trading, there's still always a little bit of emotional attachment because you're dealing with money. Sure. Yeah. So I I think that I don't believe in back testing. I believe in forward testing in 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 the moment. So if you have a strategy, the best thing that you can do that you want to test. The best thing that you can do is instead of, you know, simulating it in a in a in a program, is just trade it in real time with a small amount of money. That way you have some attachment to it. You're able to see how, and that takes time. That could take, you know, it could take six months to just test one strategy. And so I remember back in the day, like I would have lots of different strategies going to try to figure out which one which one worked, which one I was felt comfortable with. And so yeah, it does it does require an amount of time. Ten thousand hours, I don't know if that's if that's the right amount. But I would say anywhere from seventy five to twelve five twelve thousand five hours is probably <laughs> it's a better estimate. Yeah. And so in your opinion, do you ever really get good at the game? So is or is is it just one of those things where you just gotta keep at it? Like do you find do you find yourself feeling that, you know, you're you know, you're losing touch with the markets if you're not constantly active what's what's your what's your feeling around that i would say yeah i would say definitely like because things are always changing and i would say that's the that's probably the scariest thing for me is is what if my edge never starts working again mm-hmm. you know or what if we stay in a trendless market for 2 years right right like yeah because after two months go like so like I said, most of two thousand fifteen has just been it's been a horrible trading year for me because there just haven't there haven't been that many edges present. And so, you know, after a couple of months it was kinda of like, Okay, you know, uh, okay market, let's let's make up your mind and do something and then, you know, every month that goes by you're like, Okay, we've gotta be getting closer to to a decent trading market and it's just yeah. like 
you know, when when is this going to get back? You know, should I start developing an edge in this sort of market? Right. So for me, that's probably what, you know, I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably have to start. I mean, if if we're going to continue to be in this kind of market, I'm going to have to figure something out. But as of right now, I've kind of been enjoying the break, but at the same time, you know, it's, the markets have always been exciting to me, right? So, like, yeah. I remember when I first start, when I first started trading, I used to hate the weekends because I couldn't make any money on <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. And then, like, <laughs> after after years go by, you kind of like, oh, I'm glad it's the weekend. Yeah. So, but I miss that excitement with with the markets, right? That yeah. every day waking up and 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 you know having having a uh, a lot of positions on and having that potential to make X amount of dollars is just like the markets are just not, I don't know. It's a really funky market right now. I mean, you yeah. were saying, you, what, what's your what's your experience with like over the last couple of months trading? Yeah, geez, I would say for the past three or four months, it's been extremely difficult. Uh, even in, in, for intraday trading, it's very difficult. Yet, you know, for myself, it's all about, Trading smaller and, and just focusing on the prime, most you know the the most prime of pristine of setups, and those you know they they will still fail 50% of the time. <laughs> so yeah. like you said, it's it's uh, it's all about risk management and just making sure that, that you know personally that I'm staying in the game and you know that I get a chance to keep swinging the bat. Um, but you said it, you know you said a bunch of good stuff there around just you know the mindset of, of you know trying to keep that edge and. And uh, focusing on on the development of yourself as a trader, and not necessarily being scared of you know saying all right I might have to roll my sleeves up here and, and maybe get back to work and try to find something that works right. Yeah, I mean obviously I have this uh, amount this this knowledge or, or like I have different strategies like I have tons of strategies that I've you know tested or or, or maybe I can go back to and and, and see if things. If I can create an edge in this, but I, I, I you know, to be honest with you, I, I just haven't really wanted to do that because I feel like, you know, trend, trendless markets don't generally last forever, right? It's normally yeah. the markets are bullish or the markets are bearish. And and so, you know, I feel like I can make money in two out of three markets, and I just feel like we're in one of those markets right now. We're in the one-third market. That it's just it's pretty just crappy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I agree, and that's telling you before, unless maybe you're an option seller and, you know, you're playing that range, you're selling the ranges, then, uh, you know, I've, heard, I've talked to a lot of traders who've had success around that recently, but certainly from what you're a Momo trader or, you know, one of those, uh, you look for direction, then it's not not been a good several months or a good year. Exactly. So going back to that idea about backtesting, it's, it's fascinating you say that because I'm kind of in the same boat too, um, around forward testing. And I see, you know, new traders especially, they really struggle with this because um, first, you know, they they struggle with that idea of backtesting, like how to do it properly. And then I see new traders struggle a lot, a lot with compliance, meaning, you know, they'll see the signals, but they won't take them. And so what mm-hmm. they actually end up getting is like a mishmash of results, right? So, mm-hmm. yes, they have a setup to find, but they don't take all of them, so they don't have all the results actually, you know, and, and the ones they don't take are the ones that all yeah, the ones they don't take are the ones that actually work, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what exactly is the question now? So, I guess yeah, the funny part is, I guess, I guess the the perspective I like, you know, I'd love to hear you you share is. So, for those new traders out there, it seems like new traders are always searching for that holy grail where they can just say, "All right, I'm just going to feel comfortable because the holy grail so it's going to be right 100 percent of the time. I can just find that thing, and I don't have to be so picky about my." about my setups because I can just, once I get that take holy grail, I'll just take yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So what's your what's your perspective around that, around, you know, new traders searching for that holy grail? Does it exist or what's what's your opinion about that? Uh, well, it doesn't exist. There's not, and, and the, the, there, it 100% does not exist. And so, <laughs> I mean, anybody should just get that out of their head right away. I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to exist either. Like you don't have to be right 100% of the time. I mean, um, it's funny because as you're as you were talking about this, I remember like running running back tests, and then like taking that same strategy and applying it. And I like 
and I would always have like horrible results because you don't account for the emotional aspect of it. Okay. But I think the, the 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 important thing to look for here is if traders aren't taking a trade, then they need to figure out why they didn't take that trade. Mm. Okay, you need to quantify what is it about that what is it about that setup that caused me to hesitate pass on the trade and then you need to factor that into your strategy and then mm. remove those results and eventually you'll have a system that will have a flow chart if this happens then I do this Does that yeah, make I love sense? that approach yeah I love that approach of having that flow chart making it really concrete right and, and I mean here's another here's another uh, important concept that, you need, that traders need to consider is when you're making a strategy, you you, you don't want to you want to have just enough results that you actually can take all the trades because sometimes traders have too many results and then right. they have to pick, then they have to pick and choose and then uh, inevitably the ones that they don't pick kill it <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. they, and they could cause you to be frustrated and you're like oh I knew that was going to happen but I didn't buy that stock. Yeah. So you need to have enough results, or, posi or well, you need to, or have enough cash, <laughs> or, <laughs> or or structure your position size so you can uh, you can take these trades. Yeah, because otherwise it sounds like a losing game. Like I've I've seen it so many times in the past, and I've been guilty of it myself when I was a new trader, subscribing to someone's you know stock picking service. And then trying to cherry pick their trades, right? <laughs> yeah, like, it, 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 it doesn't it work. Doesn't, it doesn't really work. Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to mention that my 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 phone is starting to act up, but we are right on the hour. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of we don't have to get off the phone now, but I wanted to start to 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 close it up. Sure, sounds good, Jeff. We'll wrap things up. So just a couple more questions before your your phone dies out. So um, two things. So number one. What would you? What kind of advice would you give to a, a trader right now who's struggling with these with these markets? What would you tell him or her? Well, hmm. I, I I mean I would I would tell them exactly what I'm doing right now is now is the time to kind of step away from the markets because you don't want to you don't want to try to trade these choppy markets because a well, I'm, I, this is just with my style. If, if other traders have stock things that are working, then keep going. But for me, I'm not trading them because I don't want to lose my confidence. I don't want to lose my my my, my trading account. Uh, and and you know what? It actually kind of is refreshing to take some time away from the markets. We need to mm. recharge. So when the markets are conducive and are, you know, they do require a lot of time and research, then We'll be refreshed to do that. Yeah, I like that. And so, last question. So, if you were to do it again today, uh, do this whole thing again, would you do it the same way, or would you change anything? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think. Hmm. Well, I mean, my my own journey feels. I, I'm pretty happy with how it's happened. Obviously, there's things that probably could have happened that would have facilitated. Maybe I would have better prepared myself for when I went full time. Maybe I would. Uh, yeah, that's a tough question. I, I don't really have a, a, a great answer right now for that. No problem. Yeah, I'm always curious to hear about that because. You know, you've been trading a long time, Jeff, and you've seen every kind of every kind of market. So, yeah, I'm just just curious. So, um, but anyway, so um, one last question for you, and that's just where can people find out more about you? So, where can people find you on the internet? And uh, is there anything else you want to share with the with the audience? Well, uh, you can go to ZenTrader.ca, and I mean, you can. Uh, my email is tradewithzen at gmail dot com. If anybody wants to email me, and those are the two easiest ways. Cool. All right, Jeff. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate all your insights and perspectives. It was a lot of fun to catch up, man. All right. Take care, Houston. All right. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye.